Could you tell me a time you tried to do something innovative and it failed? Um, what did you learn from that experience um, and what went wrong? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's a great question. Um, I always try to do something innovative. Uh, and uh, I always try to, you know, I, I believe, I don't know if you ever heard this book from Seth Godin called The Purple Cow. Uh, it's a very simple concept. Basically, you're, you're driving down the road. And as a kid, you see a bunch of cows in the pasture and like, oh, my God, super exciting. But as you grow older, you, you ignore those cows. You drive down the road, you no longer see them. I mean, you see them, but your brain chooses to ignore them because it's became background noise to you. But if suddenly the cow is purple, your brain spots that. And immediately you stop, you're like, hold on, that's not normal. I wanna know what that is. And I wanna share it with everyone what I just saw. And I believe that's marketing as well. And then I, I really like this analogy from Seth Godin, which is basically, if you just do your standard marketing, you know, you, you come up with a message and you put that message across multiple channels, you're just putting out more noise because there's a lot of other companies at the same time, whether competitors or not, trying to get the same attention from your consumers or businesses. And how do you create a purple cow? How do you create something that people stop and say, hold on, I need to learn more about this. So I always try to do that. Uh, and, and I had multiple, multiple instances where I actually came up with something really unique that really worked really well and was exciting, but sometimes it didn't work. And an example, um, so uh, when I was at Siemens, uh, we, we launched a, a, an exciting new uh, device that helped to uh, image very large people, uh, people who are considered obese. Um, and so we put together a very exciting campaign and I thought we need to do something more. Like, yes, everything we're doing is exciting, um, but let's push it to the next level. And so I thought about creating a virtual reality experience where if somebody puts on the Oculus VR headset, they can actually travel inside the liver of a, a large patient. So you can actually see inside the liver um, all the different things that our technology can help you uh, do as well. Um, and for example, uh, if you're using ultrasound to image a large patient, how does that look like? And what can ultrasound do for you, at least the device from Siemens? So we built that and it took a long time. It took quite a significant budget to, to make it happen. This was also in the early days of VR. Um, and what ended up happening is that we built it and people that use it liked it, um, but it didn't necessarily sort of drive, um, drive leads for the business, right? So the ultimate goal for creating something in B2B space is to drive people to become aware of your product and then generate leads for you. And I think the reason it didn't do it is because it wasn't, the format that we had it built out, it wasn't necessarily built for, uh, you know, office, uh, medical offices, or you couldn't necessarily have a doctor come to a conference and then try out a VR headset. So you ended up being underutilized. It didn't fail because the experience was bad. In fact, everyone that used it loved it. It, it just failed because um, the, while the experience was great, it wasn't necessarily uh, designed for the target audience that we had. Um, so employees loved it. Uh, people do, who did not make decisions about medical devices loved it. But then the people actually are the doctors and physicians. Uh, they didn't have the time to try it on. Or uh, if they did, they would look and find, ah, oh, this is not exactly 100% accurate because obviously they're clinicians. Uh, but you can't really recreate a liver entirely yet in VR, so you required a lot of that. So I felt like um, I love that we did it, but at the same time, looking back, we probably would have taken that budget and used it for something else uh, that could be more effective because ultimately it's not about always being cool. It's about doing something disruptive that actually moves the business uh, forward, that actually moves the needle in favor of our business. And not just to say we're the first company to do it or we... We, we have something exciting that no one else is doing it. So lessons learned, uh, always try to uh, tie your innovative experience to your ultimate target audience and even experiment before you actually release something.